So we've finally been allowed back out to fish some matches and I've been on a few matches this week. I've been to Western Pools and I've also been to Partridge Lakes. I've had some great days out on the bank and I managed to win two matches along the way. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what the matches that I've fished and some of the great little edges that I've learned along the way that should hopefully help you if you're out fishing some matches yourself over the next couple of weeks. So the first match was on Monday and I decided to go to Western Pools for the match on the Stretton Lake. Um, I couldn't wait to get back out and I'd had to go to Weston because it's my favourite venue, full of fish and I just wanted to get back here and have a great day out. So Darren done the draw the night before and I was on peg 10 on Stretton, which is sort of in the middle of the lake and quite a narrow part of the lake. And it's an okay peg, but it wasn't a peg that I'd sort of picked, but I knew we had a lot of room that day. I knew I'd get plenty of bites. So with it being the first match back and cause I was quite unsure how to fish, I decided to be nice and positive and stick with fishing shallow and fishing with hard pellets, short and in the margin. So I just took two baits with me, six mil pellets and maggots. I had a really nice day. I caught a couple of F1 short on pellets to start with, but it wasn't very good. So I just got my head down, fishing maggots long, catching loads of hide. I had pretty much a bite of chuck for the next three hours, four hours, and I ended up with four or five carp in the margin late on. It was a really nice day's fishing and a great way to get back to matches. I ended up with 118 pound and come third overall. John Liff won the match on peg 18 that day. He had a great day catching shallow down the margin, so well done to John and also to Jack Trainer on second with £164. So you can tell the venue fished really well on the day and I couldn't wait to get back out the next day. So the next match was on Tuesday at Partridge and Nelly drew me an absolute brilliant peg, peg 126 on late five. As you can see, it's an absolutely lovely peg. First peg over the spit, plenty of room on the day and I really fancied it for a good weight. It was a nice warm day and this is one thing I want to talk about along these blogs is conditions and how as the conditions change I need to change my approach to suit. So what I noticed is it was a flat calm and bright day like I say and on partridge you've got pallets either side here to fish to in the margins and this offers great cover so this is always something I look for when it's a hot day I look for fishing by the cover so my main approach to start the session was to fish in the edges by the cover. So for fishing down the margin this day, I decided to start on pellets. Starting on pellets gives you a great chance to get some quick bites at the start of the session before looking to swap to other baits later in the session like maggots and ground bait to try and target some bigger fish. So I started by fishing under the pallet on pellets that day and I had a real nice start to the match catching 26 F1s just fishing on a 4x12 dink float with a little bulk and a short hook length with a formal expander on the hook in around two, two and a half foot of water. All through the day I was loose feeding some maggots down the middle to hopefully catch shallow but maybe on the bottom if the fish didn't want to come up in the water. But as it turned out the last two hours that day I managed to switch onto my shallow line and I caught really well till the end. I caught another 50 odd F1s and ended up with close to 80 fish which gave me a weight of 160, I think I had 164 pound and this was enough to win the match overall. I had a brilliant day. Great to be back out on the bank at Partridge. I really miss going there. So one key edge that day and one thing that I thought really helped me to win the match that day was the shallow rig I used had a much longer length of line between the float and the pole tip than a lot of other anglers. And the reason I choose to use this rig is because when it's flat calm and the fish are coming right up in the water, I feel they can easily spook away from your pole tip. And this is a tactic that often people use when they're fishing for big carp, but when you're fishing for F1s, it can also work massively well. One thing a lot of people might worry about when fishing with a bit of a longer line is miss bites. But what I always incorporate into my rig is a back shot, roughly three or four inches above the float, this just helps to hold me line tight from float to pole tip and helps me still hook plenty of bites. So let me run you through the rig from top to bottom. So the elastic I used was an orange hydro elastic. This is just perfect for when you're hooking F1 shallow. It's nice and soft. The fish aren't going to splash when you're fishing really shallow a foot 18 inches deep. The main line's 015 reflow power line which was just nice and durable. I'm using that on all my rigs at the minute when I'm fishing for F1s. No need to go any heavier than that, but no need to go any lighter. It's just the perfect strength 
for that style of fishing at this time of the year. Like I say, I've got a number eight back shot above the float. This is roughly three or four inches above the float. The float was an RW Dibber float, the number two version, which takes three number 11 shot, which I've shotted it with one shot under the float, just the semi cockney float as I slap it in, and then two shots spread out down the line, just to give a nice slow fall the hook bait and try and trick them fish that are watching the bait fall. Because the water's still quite clear. It's not on the full sort of bagging kit what you use in the summer you want to still have a bit of finesse in your rigs and this rig shotted like this allows that the hook length was a short three inch hook length of 014 and a 16 super lwg hook which is a perfect hook for double maggot when fishing shallow so i actually spoke about the long length of line between my float and my pole tip with the dibber float and what it allows me to do is just flick my rig beyond my pole tip and this was key this day as the fish I just felt were backing away from the pole tip it was flat calm like I say and the fish were just sitting on the back edge of my feed so what I've been doing is feeding regularly with 15 or 20 maggots and just flicking my rig just past the pole tip and picking them fish off at the back of the feed and often these are the bigger f1s and I caught some great big f1s that day it was a lovely day's fishing fishing shallow and that was very important I think a lot of anglers were fishing a very short lash and it wouldn't allow them to catch these fish these bonus fish that are at the back of your feed. So like I say, being aware that it's still been cold overnight, the, fit, the water is still quite clear, and that by having a slightly longer lash between your float and your pole tip, you can help to catch them few more fish during the springtime. And you know, when the fish are coming shallow, they're looking to feed shallow, but they're not gonna be on the same tactics what you're fishing in the summer with a really short lash and fishing really shallow. Fishing with a bit of a longer line will definitely help catch more fish at this time of the year. So the next match I fished was on Thursday the 1st of April, which is actually my birthday. So I was hoping for a really good draw, but unfortunately Nelly drew me peg 79. Don't know why he did that. I don't really like that area at all. Um, but the f venue was fishing brilliantly well, so I knew I was gonna get some bites. Um, on this peg there's not a lot of cover across so again like i spoke about on tuesday i'm looking for a bit of cover it was still nice and warm and i want to fish where some fish are likely to hang out so i was looking around and i had a nice reed bed down my left hand edge so this was going to be my main place where i thought i'd catch most of my fish and then i also had some nice shallow water to my left hand edge just short shy of the pallet so i decided to pot some ground bait in there and now this is a key bait at Partridge at the minute and I'm going to talk about this later on and in later matches this was really the key tactic was fishing with ground bait in the edge. So this day I caught mainly on pellets to my right hand edge, steady away through the day and then I caught some better fish in the left edge on maggots and ground bait late on. I weighed £81 and this put me midway in the section with £85 winning the section. It was a really tight section that day with £74 being the last weight in the section. So a couple more fish and I could have won the section that day, but you know, another brilliant day's fishing. So looking back on Thursday's match and I was, you know, only £4 off winning the section. I'm always trying to think how can I have won that section that day, but looking back at my match and thinking what I did wrong. And what I generally think I did wrong is I didn't give myself a chance of catching some bigger fish later on in the session or didn't go for it enough down my left hand edge and I just sort of fed it steady with bait just feeding me large uh, cad pot every now and again and potting some in but I really wish I'd just potted a decent volume of ground bait and tried to draw plenty of fish into my peg because they were feeding early in the week it was warm and some fish I'm sure would have come to me and I would have had some better fish late on so this is one key thing I would say always give yourself a line where you feed a bit more positive and give yourself a chance of having a great end to your match and catching a big weight later on and that is what I think I missed out on that day and I definitely think I could have won my section that day even from a peg which I felt was a poor draw. So the Good Friday match next and again I was at Partridge Lakes and after the day before Nelly drawing me 79 I was, you know, optimistic he'd draw me a better peg on this day, and he did. He drew me peg six on late one. Love this peg. Always seems to be a few fish around here, and it's one thing that was great was the day before I felt like 
I should have been a bit more positive in some shallow water. And I did have a nice bit of shallow water down my right hand edge here. So I had two foot against the bank, just short of the pallet again. And what I decided was I was going to feed a lot more bait today with a big pot, a 100 mil guru pot of ground bait, and just prime that up and hopefully have a really good end to the session. So to start with, I just started my match fishing across to the island on pellets. Again, it's nice and shallow across here. There's no real reeds hanging out in the water and I can get tight to the bank. So with it being warm, I wanted to get tight to that bank and then prime my edge line up for later in the session. And early on in the session, I could just see that not so many anglers were catching and it was really interesting. Uh, it was completely different to the last few days where everyone seemed to go in and get some bites straight away. And we'd had a bit of a colder night, we'd had a bit of a frost and I just felt it knocked the fishing back a little bit and we just needed to take it steady in the session. So as I say, at the start of the session, I was fishing across with pellets and I just tapped a bit of bait in and nothing was happening. I weren't getting any indications. I'd seen Alex Rimmer on peg four catch a couple of fish fishing across to the point of the island. But on this peg, on peg four, there's actually a bit of a clump of grass. And I feel like, as I've spoke about in other days, these fish are in the cover. And that little bit of cover was probably helping him catch a few fish across, but I just couldn't catch anything at all. So I knew I'd have to make my edge line work a bit earlier than I actually wanted to. I wanted to try and uh, leave it a bit longer. So I've dropped in on it where I fed that bit of ground bait and straight away I've had some indications and I'd fed quite a lot of bait here. I actually thought that I'd messed up when I'd, at the start when I was sat there thinking, oh, I don't really want to go in on my edge line because I fed a lot of bait there. But it just shows how important it has actually been to feed plenty of ground bait to draw these fish in your peg. So obviously I decided to feed me edge line to me right quite positively from the start by putting a full 100 mil pot of ground bait in. And I was hoping to leave it a bit longer and pot it through the day and get a good late run down that edge. But because I couldn't get any bites, I had to go in and try and make it work straight away. And normally, if I was going to start there quickly, I'd have just tapped a few pellets in and then slowly built up my peg. But today, I had big potted it from the off. And I went in and I got some sign straight away, which it really surprised me, actually, how many fish were in my peg straight away. And especially the fact that I couldn't get any bites across. And I'm thinking, you know, is it about the fact that I'm fishing next to the cover or is it the fact that I put some ground bait in and I didn't put any ground bait in across and you know later in the week again like I talk about this ground bait is was getting more and more important in the matches and you had to feed some to get some fish in your peg so I've had a quite a simple match after that I've just fished down my right hand edge and my pegs got slowly better through the day and I've had some nicer fish at the end some decent carp up to about eight pounds and I've really enjoyed my day just fishing three or four maggots on the hook and just potting either a medium or large guru pot of ground bait in. I've ended up weighing 92 pound, which after the last couple of days, there'd been some massive weights and I, you know, I knew I'd done all right because I hadn't seen any one catch, but surprisingly it actually was enough to win the match. So that was my second win of the week. So absolutely buzzing with that. Um, just shows how well the ground baits were, has worked, feeding quite positive. A lot of people have struggled to get any fish in the peg, but by putting a decent volume of ground bait in, the fish were coming in my peg, and it was something that I was definitely going to take into the next couple of days matches, especially as it was going to get colder. So at this time of year, when I talk about margin fishing, everyone expects, you know, very shallow water and, you know, positive tackle. But with it being quite cold, the fish are still in, two to two and a half foot of water so you need a bit of a delicate rig so i'll start at the top of the rig i've got white hydro elastic um, i always tend to use this at partridge when i'm fishing down the edge just in case i up some better carp it's just got a bit of beef bit more than the orange hydro what i'd use for shallow or fishing across just in case i do up some better fish the main line again 015 i'm sticking to that on all my rigs preston power line 015 absolutely perfect two number eight back shot even more important when you're fishing on slopes like you are on the edge just to hold your rig dead in position and in the right part so my rig isn't drifting further up the bank into shallower water or away from the bank and my hook bait's coming off the bottom the float is a 4v12 rw dink which is a lovely float for this it's got a wire stem and it's nice and stable for when you're fishing down the edge and you're trying to hold your rig dead on your bait i've been using these for both pellets and for maggots and ground bait so it makes it nice and simple i'm just using a dink float 4v12 is the perfect float for fishing two to two and a half foot of water 
I've shot that with a little bulk of number 9s above a short 4 inch hook length of 012 and a 16 Super LWG hook. So Saturday's match, I was back to Partridge again and Brad's done the draw today and he's drew me peg 153 on Covey 6 which is a decent area of the lake but the problem here is there's two great pegs to your right in pegs 151 and 149 they're quite famous pegs at Partridge and they've got a lot of fish so I was worried that I'd struggle to beat them pe pegs, people on them pegs but I still was pretty sure I'd get a good day's fishing we'd had a frost overnight today so I decided to take it a bit careful at the start I was always going to feed my ground bait down the margins for later on and big pot it but I just wanted to go and fish in a bit of deeper water today and just feel my way into the session because I was worried that if I did go in straight away with it being so cold in the morning I might ruin my peg so to start with I've just gone across on pellets and I've fed some pellets and I've caught a fish straight away and I've gone back in again and I've not had an indication and I've fed a few times and I'm looking round and no one's really catching and I'm thinking to myself that ground bait worked really well yesterday down the edge. Maybe I should feed some across. So I've come back and I've put some ground bait in my pot and I've gone back out and I've put my ground bait in, three maggots on the hook and caught an F1 straight away. Within five seconds, it went straight under, which is unbelievable, the difference from feeding micros to feeding a bit of ground bait and a bite straight away. Same rig, same depth of water. I've come back in, fed again, ground bait, caught a carp, four pound. And it's just amazing when you're on the wrong bait you just will, will not catch anything and when you swap to the right bait you're getting bite straight away so i carried on feeding this and what actually happened this day was it got warmer and warmer through the day and i was catching quite well in two two and a half foot and then i started getting lined out so i didn't think that the fish were ready to come into the mud line yet because i did we have got nice mud lines on the pegs at Parch and this mud line this day was about 16 inch and I thought that was probably a bit too shallow so I didn't want to fish there so my next place to look was down the margin so I've, I've had a look down each edge and it was slow they weren't coming in at the time and I was a bit like I don't know what to do I tried fishing maggots short and shallow no bites on that and again I just feel like feeding this ground bait was the key so I decided I'm going to big pot some ground bait in the mud and I'm just going to go for it see if some fish come in and they haven't until half an hour to go when I've gone in and caught 10 decent carp there and it's really got me out of it and I've ended up with 70 pound which won the default section after peg 149 framed in the match of 84 pound so decent result again like I said I knew I was going to struggle to beat 149 but I've still managed to win the default section and get a decent weight out of that area so as I explained I caught later on this day fishing in the mud line and it's a phrase that we use a lot when we're f1 fishing but not a lot of people might know what it means and basically it just means the little spots across on the far bank where you can get right against the bank in the shallow water normally between a foot and two foot deep and normally in the summer this is the first place you'd look to fish when the water is really warm and the fish are wanting to feed aggressively in the shallow water but at this time of year when it is cold the fish don't always want to come in there but on this particular day it was a really cold morning and by the end of the match it was nearly 20 degrees and i think all the fish have gone right into the shallow water where it was the warmest so again paying attention to conditions early in the match fishing a bit deeper water two and a half foot of water and later on when it warms up slowly push yourself up into the shallow water into the mud line so the rig for fishing in the mud line is a bit different again i've got white hydro because often in the mud line you can catch some decent carp so on my deeper rig for a cross i used orange hydro but when i moved into the mud line i've gone to a white hydro to try and catch some better fish my main line again 015 main line two number eight back shot four inch away from the float the floats are 0.4 muddy by rw which is the ideal float for that style of fishing it's been designed purposely made for fishing in that shallow water so it's the perfect float for that it's in 0.4 of a gram so it has plenty of weight for when them carp come in your peg and they're wafting the rig about to try and keep it nice and stable over the bait what you've fed it's shotted with six number eight stops in a little bulk above a short three inch hook length and a size 16 super lwg and you might be wondering about early in the day when i'm talking about my edge rigs and my across rigs i'm talking about four inch hook lengths and why have i moved to a three inch hook length on my mud rig and it's just to keep my rig in proportion with that depth of water because i'm in such shallow water 
I want to shorten my hook length down to get my bolt closer to the hook and keep my rig pinned on the bottom. So Sunday's match, Easter Sunday, and for a change, I decided to go to Partridge. And again, I've drew on late six, but this time I was on peg 135, which I was a bit happier with because the wind was blowing in my face on this day. And it was it's on like the side bank looking up the lake. And with the wind coming down from both sides of the island, I felt like there would be quite a few fish here and I'd have a good chance of winning the lake from this peg. So to start off this day, again, I started across on pellets because it was quite sort of um, cold in the morning. We'd had another frost and, it, and I felt I had to start in this way uh, to give myself the best chance of getting a few bites at the start. So I've started across two and a half foot of water and just fished with pellets. Caught a few early and then as the same as it happened the day before, it's petered off. I've stopped getting bites. I've swapped to feeding a little bit of ground bait and it's brought some fish back into my peg and I've carried on catching for the next few hours. But what's actually happened through the day, and it's the theme now, it's actually getting windier and windier all the time, and I couldn't fish across. So I had to change my match. So straight away, as soon as that wind picked up and I couldn't fish across, I've started to big pop my margin to my right in two and a half foot of water with ground bait and micros 50-50 again, that pole mix ground bait what I spoke about and I've started to lose feed some maggots on my short line. I've had to throw them very short this day, a short kit and a short four. With it being quite windy in my face, the most important thing is I can throw my bait accurate. If I'm gonna go any further, I just wouldn't have been able to lose feed my bait accurately enough. So I've decided to put it nice and close. And later, late in the match, I've caught a few fish short on maggots, some nice big F1s, I've probably had half a dozen fish there, and then I've caught some really good carp down that edge last sort of 40 minutes, probably had eight or nine cart there, and it's really boosted my weight up. I've ended the match with 98 pound, which won the lake and put me fifth overall in the match. So as you can see, this ground bait tactic and fishing with maggots is really working for me at the minute on Partridge. It's something that not everyone's doing. A lot of people are just fishing with pellets and it's just not working at the minute. You have to feed a bit of ground bait to get some fish in your peg.